Power Hour is a free bi-weekly webinar series for accounting professionals presented by Michelle Long and Dan DeLong, who are very passionate about the industry, QuickBooks, and apps that integrate with QuickBooks. You can find out all the details about the webinar series at qbpowerhour.com. So without further ado, here's Michelle and Dan. Welcome, everybody, to another QB Power Hour. Um, Michelle, it's so nice to see you. And uh, this is like an annual event we're having here with uh, with Mark and and uh, and Hector, like the reunion. <laughs> yeah, it's reunion day on Power Hour. So it's a fun one today, and we got lots of great stuff. So I'm very glad to have everybody joining us today after the eclipse so i hope some of you were able to see it and made it home i heard there were some pretty amazing traffic jams getting home um especially on the east coast and stuff so hopefully everybody made yeah. it home safely yeah so uh so very interesting nobody um you know there was no apocalypse uh so we're i, I guess um hector is with 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 doing uh taxes does that mean that everybody who procrastinated doing their taxes because they were expecting a, a, a cataclysmic event the, now the, the irs there. yeah the irs gave us a um an extension uh just in case <laughs> they actually put it on the website just in case the world is ending you actually don't have to file your taxes so <laughs> a little, a little i'm gonna have to get work in today <laughs> all right well we're just gonna um we're gonna play a little audible today um because we have hector and mark joining us uh in and, and uh Hector loves to talk, <laughs> so, and he's and he's got a lot of things to tell us. So we're not going to do our our traditional slides and 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 those types of things because we really want to dive almost jump right into what's changed in the right tool tool. Is that the way you say it? <laughs> Is it right tool tool or right tool? We say engine? right tool app. Right tool right app. tool app. Even Although it is kind of like DC Comics, you know, you say oh. DC Comics, even though it's like <laughs> District Comics Comics or something like that. <laughs> or pin number. <laughs> All right. So if you haven't joined us before, uh, when when Mark and, and uh, Hector had joined us before, we will we'll be sharing the, the slides of previous um, QB Power Hours and other webinars that we've done with, with Hector or Mark about the right tool itself. But today we really want to talk about just what's changed in the last year within within right tool. And that's why we wanted to have Mark and Hector come on to, to talk about it because we really appreciate. I mean, I think um, I think in, in the in the general gist of things, the the what 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 you do, Hector, for the accounting community and and what this tool has has offered the accounting community besides the i guess the mission is saving precious seconds one click at a time and that and that's really what you what you've done to make people uh or allow people to be more efficient inside of inside of working with with quickbooks online was that like the ca uh, catalyst for for all of this uh because you guys are like the the odd couple of accounting uh if you I'm not going to say who's uh, Felix and who's Oscar here, but uh, this is really a unique pairing of of the two of you. Yeah, I, th I think Mark and I both share uh, the same vision that accountants should concentrate on doing good accounting and not not in clicking it, it, to in a million buttons to process one transaction or clicking a hundred things, you know, to be able to reclassify or change the payee on, on, on a particular group of transactions. And we're, we're going to showcase towards the end of this webinar, kind of like a good, uh, it would be a good capstone sort of like course on, on right tool, because there's so many moving parts on the new reallocate tool that we built that kind of enca encapsulates all the power of, of, uh, what a third party tool can do. And, 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 and only a small scrappy team of developers can build this quickly and efficient versus waiting for quickbooks uh to build it so if you don't mind uh, i'm going to share my screen yep. uh mark i'll let you add any notes that you may have to that uh we do have a full set of slides so if you share the slides um uh, dan they can we just skip yep. the introductions we're going to be covering mm -hmm. a couple of things here so first of all how do you get started with right tool we want to get everybody started at least with a free version we strongly believe that if you 
get accustomed to using the free version. You see all the uh, efficiency improvements from the free version, and there's tons of efficiency improvements on the free version. You will be more likely to upgrade to Pro sooner rather than later. So you just go to righttool.app forward slash free. It will forward you to the Google Chrome extension uh, landing page. You just click on add to Chrome. It's going to work in Google Chrome. It's going to work in, in Microsoft Edge. It's going to be working in other Chromium-based browsers like Brave and other ones that, that, that have come out. There's, there's so many of them. But it definitely does not work in Firefox. It definitely does not work in Safari. And it definitely, most definitely, does not work with the new QBO desktop app. Okay, so if actually, <laughs> if QuickBooks wants to make the QuickBooks desktop app open, uh, if, if but I just don't know if it's if if it was built via, via Chromium, but if they do want to make it open, we would gladly add uh, Right Tool to it. Right now, the QuickBooks desktop app and Right Tool plus Chrome or Right Tool plus Microsoft Edge is sort of like the competition per se. Like we're both battling for that attention because if QuickBooks wants people not to use Right Tool, they're going to continually drive people to the QBO desktop app. And, I don't, and it's not because they have anything against us. It's because they would like to control that experience. The QuickBooks desktop app has, has added a couple of extra things that makes QBO a little bit more pleasant, but I don't think it's enough to sort of like be compared with the power of Right Tool if you use Google Chrome or um, Microsoft Edge browser. Uh, so definitely check out uh, the free edition. We have over 10,000 downloads. I think it's like 16,000 downloads at this point. Uh, we have a full YouTube channel with over 100 videos explaining what every single feature and right tool does, both free and pro. And we also do bi-monthly, uh, bi-monthly, so every two months, a webinar series updating our users, both free and pro of all the new things that we're adding. And in some cases, we'll showcase some beta, something we're like kind of just thinking about, and then we get live feedback. I would say at this point, uh, at the beginning, it was probably 80% my input, 20% mark. At this point, it's probably 80% our users' input, and Mark and I have maybe 10% each of say of what goes and what doesn't go. Our users are telling us what they want, and this app is very, very much crowdsource so that yeah. that uh no, facebook group i think that that's one yeah that's one of the things that i think is well, from just what i've experienced uh just seeing um as as the as the right tool app has has grown is the rapid iteration that you guys are are able to do you know uh, i would see you know hector post mark make this happen and then five minutes later it <laughs> mark, not not mark not, not five not five minutes, but see that see most software companies they'll have an idea, they'll have a beta, and then they'll have a focus group, and then they'll try to figure out if it's a good idea or a bad idea. In this case, we're seeing live reactions from our users from the suggestions, and sometimes I'll do like a screenshot of like a mock up and I go, hey, would this work? And people go, wait, I don't get it. You know, why would the button be on the left or the right? So a lot of this stuff is being happening on the fly with with the users and the way we interact with the users. There's some emails. But the most part is the Facebook group. So if you haven't joined, the, first of all, get Right Tool if you don't have it, even if it's a free version, and then log in to the Right Tool QuickBooks uh, online users group because you will, tons of ideas come from there. People will post, hey, I'm having this problem with QuickBooks. How would you solve it? So not even like a Right Tool question. And then it gives heck, uh, um, Mark and I the opportunity to read it and go, is this something we can solve? So a lot of the solutions that we've come up with are based on like questions that weren't even about uh, right tool. It was more like I'm having this issue. So we're trying as hard as possible to to kind of like instantly give instant gratification to our users, especially the pro users, um, about the things that they kind of wish QuickBooks Online uh, could do. So definitely check that out. Uh, the link to the group is in the slides. Uh, the link to the free versions in the slides. The YouTube channel. The the Bi-weekly web, bi monthly webinar series, and once you decide to go to Pro, Pro is going to be fifty dollars a month per user, uh, or five hundred dollars a year if you pay annually. And there's no per company per client. You know that that's stuff that most apps do, uh, where they charge you per client. There's no no such thing. We actually don't connect to the QuickBooks files at all. We actually don't even know how many clients you have. I mean, uh, it's just we don't connect to QuickBooks. We we work with you in your browser 
as a power it, tool, right? Like we're just a power tool. It's kind of like the, the 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 solar glasses that everybody had to wear <laughs> yesterday for the eclipse. It, it goes over the top of yeah. of, <laughs> of the browser so that you can use QuickBooks safely without yeah. burning your retina. Damn, yeah, right. you are so good at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of, kind of like that, and and, event, and there is a um, a login or a upgrade button inside Right Tool, or you can go to righttoolpro.com forward slash register, and you can set up a fourteen day free trial, risk free for the Pro edition if you want to. You don't need to register at all for the free edition, and um, uh, if you have a firm with more than twenty users, we can do uh, custom pricing. Okay, so um, Michelle, you want to add something before I jump to the demo? Well, so Hector, I was just going to say one thing. First of all, I think it's amazing. And this is where I think you guys, one of the reasons you already have 16,000 users or downloads is because you are so responsive to everybody's input and feedback and all that stuff that it does save such huge amounts of time when you're working in QuickBooks. Do you have any estimates or have people told you, gosh, this saves me X amount of hours or estimates? Do you have any kind of ballpark? No, people you don't. say it's, it's hard to quantify, a, isn't it? A lot of people say hours. Um, we, we don't have a number we can put in our marketing material the way right. kind of like QuickBooks does, which I think many of those things are made up, by the way, with different, different, different issue, <laughs> different conversation. But I, th I think what's better is what, what's better is that people tell us, um, you saved the you saved me from a whole Same bunch point. of frustration, which yeah, is a it's so it's more point. it's more of yeah. a qualitative <laughs> term. Than a quantitative term, so it's like, and some yeah. people are saying, uh, with the right tool, it makes QuickBooks pleasant again. Maybe that could be our political uh, thing. Yeah. We could do there make QuickBooks pleasant yeah. again. Yeah, so it makes it makes QuickBooks work pleasant again because it takes away just dreaded clicks and that sort of thing. But I, yeah. if I had to make a guess, I would say, and I do this based on how many users we have, how many people pay for the tool. I would say that if it didn't save you at least two hours a month, you wouldn't pay the fifty dollars a month. So I would say I think yeah. I'm I will gladly I will, I will easily say at least two hours. And Mark, I don't know if you have any other opinions on that, but I would say about that. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things where it's across the board. Um, yeah, some people they're like, oh yeah, it always saves me like you know a few minutes here and there, but I'm you know so it glad that it exists. But then there are some people who are like, oh yeah. I used batch enter or something like that, especially the people who like batch entering things oftentimes will wow. tell me it's like, oh yeah, it saved me like 10 hours of work this month. So it is really across the board, depending on how you use it. Yeah. And some people are saying, Hey, I I'm, I'm, I'm so glad I didn't have to buy Sassant or transaction pro for this one specific task. Yeah. Um, so it, it, we're not a full replacement for Sassant or transaction pro at all. We're not even close to that. But the most common thing, like importing journal entries, is something that we solved early on, which is a good transition to make. So I'm 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 very happy to announce that, not related to Right Tool at all, QuickBooks has finally started bringing in journal entry imports into QuickBooks Online natively. So no need for a third-party app. Okay, uh, like half of my clients' files have it. And uh, like two weeks ago, only like two of my clients' files had it. So it looks like they're, they're, they're going to be done facing this thing in very, very soon. And I'm going to showcase how this works. So we're going to talk about the built-in journal entry tool inside QuickBooks, on, journal entry import inside QuickBooks Online. I'm calling it a beta. They are not calling it a beta, but I'm calling it a beta just because it just came out. And um, generally, you can't really give QuickBooks credit for not calling the first iterations of their things, not a beta, because most of the times they are betas, but it's worked pretty well. So if you actually know the direct URL, you can just paste it in there and it will open up the journal entry for you. As I mentioned earlier in the slides, you can go into the slides, there's the journal entry, uh, I mean, the, the direct URL, if you want to copy and paste that, add it to your favorites, whatever it happens to be. Um, and also worth mentioning, you can get to it if it's enabled in your file, you can click on the gear menu, top right of the screen, and then you can click on where it says import data. And then there should be a new icon under import data called journal entry. So again, this is built into QuickBooks Online. You don't need a third-party app. Uh, we just need to make sure that all of our all of the files have it. Okay, all versions. We're talking about simple start, plus essentials. Like I, As far as I know, this is a new feature that works across the board 
all QuickBooks files. Thank God they didn't just add it to advance because that would have made me strangle somebody <laughs> over. I, I that, would, that would go under yeah. the, the, the Hector bunkers. Right, that will drive me <laughs> flipping bunkers correct so what's really cool about this page is you get you get uh this uh download import guide which is a pdf it's like a little cheat sheet i think it's awesome especially if you're training someone on this tool it gives you a really good visual letting you know hey this is what all the fields that can be imported into and then it makes it very obvious for you to know how you can map your existing spreadsheet uh to that okay so this is this is what um what it looks like now so this, so this would be like a reference guide you would print out or something like that. The other really cool thing that it does is it allows you to download a sample CSV. Uh, the sample CSV is, a, it could be open in Excel, just a normal uh, spreadsheet file. There's a couple of particularities on this uh, sample CSV. Let me zoom in so you can see a little bit better. Uh, particularity number one worth mentioning is there, there are um, asterisks on each of the fields that are required. So the only required fields are journal entry number, journal entry date, and, and the account name. Okay, debits and credits are not required, but it would be useless to have a journal entry without them, but they're technically not required because they don't have an asterisk on them. Um, the other thing is worth mentioning is there is a tax code um, column in it. This is because they're porting this over from the UK and Canada because you, UK and Canada uh, both had this feature for like nine years. So this is what I mean by beta. It means that they like half implement something and then they somebody goes on vacation and they forget that the tax code is irrelevant for the US. So the so the template itself has this, and then there's some notes about VAT codes. So of course, this is very obvious that they took the, sort of copy and paste the UK code, put it in the US and started releasing uh, it to the users. So you, you're you gonna delete uh, this extra data that's in here, because you actually don't need that. Uh, so you just delete that extra uh, data and you delete the tax code because you're not gonna use the tax code. Uh, of course, at some point, hopefully in the near future, uh, they'll fix this and then it it, it will make this conversation um, obsolete. I would very much like that. Um, but for now, just kind of like giving you some usefulness on this thing. The second particularity on the on the built-in template is that the journal entry date is pre-formatted with like the UK format. Okay, so don't <laughs> ask again, why did they do this? QuickBooks, please. It's so, it's so easy to do the right thing, right? But uh, I don't know, you get tempted to just... I ask, will say all these things. Yeah. As a developer, I do kind of get the date thing. It is the most annoying thing on the face of the planet. <laughs> uh, yeah. so, so ho hopefully they're hopefully they're fixing this as we speak and or or maybe there's different versions out there like mine does that but somebody else's won't. Who, who the heck knows. Um so you you want to make sure that you have the dating correct or that you when you do the mapping you do the correct format. The date is not required on on rows two and below for every journal entry. So you could leave a blank. You could also have a date there, but keep in mind that it actually um, ignores it. Okay. So you could keep, you could leave a blank or you can put it across. What you can't skip is the journal entry number. The way QuickBooks knows that every line belongs to the same journal entry is if they have the same number. So having the same number is how you tell it, um, especially um, uh, especially uh, if you have multiple journal entries per per entry, you could just import a single one, but you could also import multiple. Now there's no limit on how many journal entries you can import, but there's a total of 1,000 lines that you can import. That was so. Then, then technically there would be a limit of 500 journal entries uh, <laughs> with, with two lines. Sorry, yeah. So there is a mathematical limit. So the mathematical <laughs> limit is a thousand lines, which if you only had you know two lines per journal entry which is the minimum then you would have 500 journal entries total so but the 500 i mean the 1000 lines is the true entry then you have an account number you can either put the account number by itself or you can put the account uh the account name by itself the whole thing goes haywire when the where the there's both account names and account numbers this is something that is just difficult to manage uh, because QuickBooks Online is very inconsistent on how they do account numbering uh, systems, with especially with sub accounts. It's, and, uh, and Mark is shaking his head because for other tools we've had to like manipulate this whole account number issue. So that's really all you need to know. Um, the the thing that I kind of dislike about the 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 sample is the sample doesn't give you like your own account number or your own classes 
or your own locations. It just gives you random data. So I couldn't import the sample, which is different than the, the balance sheet sample because in QuickBooks Online, sorry, not the balance sheet, the budget. If you export a budget uh, example template in QuickBooks Online, it gives you your actual data. So this, so it would be interesting if QuickBooks were, were able to dynamically just grab random accounts and random classes and random names and put them in there so that your entry looks like something like it's your data. But for now, this is just a template you can look at and use as a sort of as a guiding principle to build your own journal entry. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and delete all this data. OK, and then I'm going to use uh, current data from my QuickBooks file to build the journal entry in Excel to use it as a as a sort of starting point for building the journal entry prior to bringing it into QuickBooks. OK, so let's say I'm just going to grab a couple of accounts here at random. OK, I'm going to grab a couple of accounts. We'll do some with sub accounts, some without. OK, and I'm just going to um, ask you to like imagine the journal entry being a lot longer. So it sort of makes sense why we would use import instead of just typing it manually. OK, there's tons of uh, there will be tons of reasons why somebody would prefer to bring it via via import instead of manually. Uh, mostly just trying to generally just avoid errors uh, as a whole. Um, so that could be you know one of the reasons, but there, there's 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 so many. So just imagine this is the journal entry we're trying to uh, import. So I'll just copy this information over. So I'm going to start with journal entry number. I'm going to call this HG040924. And then I'm going to copy and paste this journal entry number down across the six lines that I want to have for the same journal entry. For the date, I'll put today's date. Okay, and I'll copy this down. I don't I don't click and drag because it's it's uh, it'll change them for me. But like I said, you can have them in there or you can just have it on the very first line. Then uh, the account name, this is where I'm going to bring the information that's in here. So this one is savings. This one is automobile. This one is job expenses okay pop quiz what would be a faster way for me to get those account uh, names into the spreadsheet something pop in right quiz. tool but without without right tool without, without right, tool. right tool just hmm. export the 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 report or the journal entry Ex exactly so the i would go into uh transaction, transaction journal, journal. Yeah, transaction journal. If the if, the, if it already oh, yeah. exists, you got it. <laughs> uh, Hundred points. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so you you would export uh, this transaction journal, whether it's the old the new reports or the classic reports. Export this to a CSV or to an Excel, and then just use the data that's already in there and paste it. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, let me just zoom this in for a second. I'm going to go ahead and bring it in this way um, with the account numbers just so we can see if there's any weird sort of interaction uh, with this, um, with, with the account number. So I'm just gonna paste that in there, uh, including the account numbers. So, and then again, if we if we have any issues with the account numbers uh, being in there, we'll, we'll, we'll play with it. It'll be nice for us to have um, that information handy. Okay, so I'm gonna put 500, 500, 500, and then uh, 250. 250 and 1000 okay um all right so again uh the, the the date format i'm using the actual american date format I'm, what i was telling you is the template comes in, in in weird european format and i call it weird where the rest of the world calls us weird but a different issue but <laughs> in the in the european format you could put it there on your normal format and then just when you map it, you just tell it which format you're using. And okay? I think Michael McClellan said that um, his version does have the actual normal United, well, normal United States <laughs> format. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so <laughs> it might be depending on what your uh, sample ends up being, you probably want to adjust for whatever that is. Uh, it, it, could it, just... it could just it could just be classic, you know, uh, QuickBooks having different versions of of, of QuickBooks for different people type of thing, okay? So I'm gonna put in my uh, customer information and same thing uh, if you wanna bring classes and locations, uh, let's just do here, the new construction class. So we'll uh, copy this over and bring that over here, okay? So you can also delete any columns you're not using. So if you're not using location, you can delete that. 
Like you don't have to have data that you're not gonna import. And essentially this is what your uh, template would look like. Take a picture with your phone, okay? Um, and, and then once you have it all ready in here, okay, and notice that there's a, there's a, a master memo line and a description line. This is interesting. So a description would be each of the lines of the journal entry and the memo would just be the memo at the very bottom which is this guy over here, the bottom memo. So you actually, memo is one of those things that you also don't need to repeat across multiple lines. So this would be a uh, bottom memo or something like that. And just like the dates, you actually don't need to have uh, the dates past the very first line. So the, the memo uh, column and the journal entry are the two that you only need to have the first line set up, okay? So now that we have our journal uh, in here, we have to save it as a PDF. Sorry, did I say PDF? I'm crazy. You did. You have to save it. <laughs> like what? Yeah, yeah. You have to. <laughs> you have to save it as a CSV. Okay. I I I knew it was three letters, but I got the three letters wrong. So you have to save it as a CSV. I, I don't even think. Close. You, yeah. I yeah, but I I got the number of letters right. Um. <laughs> so we're gonna click on the gear menu, go to import data, and then go to journal entries. And then we're gonna click on browse, and we're gonna go find that uh, that journal. And of course, I don't remember where I put the journal, so let me put it in the desktop. Let me save this again. Put this in the desktop. Save, okay, and then come back into QuickBooks. Pick my desktop. There's my journal. Then when I click on next, it's gonna ask me to uh, to map it. Now, what's nice about this is because I used the headers from the template, then I don't have to remap it. So if you have your own spreadsheet that you didn't use, then you have to come in here and make sure you match this up. So which is my journal entry number, which is my date. But of course I already had the headers in my template. That's the advantage of using uh, the template as the as the baseline. And here is the the formatting for the date. So if you happen to be using non, non weird, just different <laughs> European dating style, uh, you can just uh, pick uh, pick the, those here, okay? So then we're gonna go to next. And then of course, you know, QuickBooks, the actual export of the account name exactly <laughs> as they've chosen the reports is not acceptable in the import, okay? Again, because QuickBooks, it's just that's such a uh, weird, okay? That's as the kids right? say womp womp today. Yeah, right. So <laughs> couple so, so, so the, the, the solution for this is going to be um, either just removing account numbers all together or just using uh, the names without the account numbers. So I'm gonna go in, actually, I'm going to let's delete all the account numbers here. So I'm deleting all the account numbers and notice I'm deleting them both from the, uh, from the beginning of the account name and also from every sub account, okay? And I know some people are saying, well, Hector, at this point, I would have just written 20 journal <laughs> entries by hand by now. Yeah, I understand. But sometimes we have reallocation journal entries. We have uh, payroll job costing journal entries. You may have all sorts of like long and complex journal entries that we're already getting this data from third-party apps. And hopefully they're bringing you clean accounts and clean customer names and that sort of thing. So we're gonna save this as, uh, we'll do journal entry number two. And exactly what I did, just a recap, what I did was I removed all the all the account numbers. And also I removed the spaces between the columns and the accounts. Just remember that sometimes those are hard to remember. Sometimes as you're cleaning up, you'll forget to delete those spaces. I know Mark and I have gone through our, our fair share of growing pains um, you know, with that, with importing and that sort of thing. Okay, so we'll go back here, bring the new journal entry in, click on next. Let's go to next. And now it says the accounts don't exist. Why are you being such a weirdo, QuickBooks? Okay, let's try um, doing the following. The, I'm gonna. It's all of them, out. so it's not. Yeah. It's not the fact that they're sub accounts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of. You, you'll see. I'm gonna go to the gear menu and go to account and settings. I'm gonna go into advanced, and then I'm gonna go into uh, account numbers and disable them. Okay, now that's not gonna delete them from your database, thank God, but- uh, Just hiding them. I, I don't know where I read somewhere. Um, it's actually not here, but it's in a link somewhere where they're suggesting to turn off account numbers. Again, we mentioned at the beginning, account, account numbers are going to throw you off in this whole thing. So we'll go to next and, okay. Uh, let's see, let's try this again. 
Let's go, go browse, journal number two, next. Let's go to next. And why are these accounts? Why does it tell me these accounts don't exist? All right, I'll try one more thing here. We're going to go back and let's go to mm, somebody's saying, hey, you just turned off account numbers. Maybe you should do like a whole refresh of QuickBooks. That's a good idea. Should I log out, yeah. log back in? Um, let's let's just see really quick. Let me this, look this, is, this is an interesting development. Hector stumped himself. <laughs> yeah, kind of. The account numbers like show The immovable here. object and unstoppable force have collided. Yeah. And we yeah, so so I, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do something that's even more quirky, um, which which uh which uh, which is probably gonna work. And um, but let me turn. Okay, so I didn't fully turn off the account numbers. Give me a second. Say, uh, -huh. uh, you and Hector Garcia <laughs> are working on this at the same time. This yeah, my uh, my alter ego. <laughs> Your evil twin. Wow. Yeah, I love it. Okay, let me. <laughs> that's Hector with me... the goatee. All right, I'm going to log out for a second, log back in, okay? QuickBooks went haywire with me changing account numbers. Okay, so I'll log back in. We'll it's see because they're the... trying to fix it while you're, while you're talking Right, of course. They, they, they noticed me criticizing <laughs> it at the very beginning, and they're like, okay, of course. Hector, the royalty, let's fix it for him. Sure. In my dreams. Okay. I mean, that's what I do when we're on these webinars. So. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, all right so okay so now officially it's turned off so that, that could have been part of the issue it didn't it didn't fully sort of refresh turning off the account numbers i think this should work now let's see and by the way this should work now it's my new slogan i'm getting a shirt on out of this um you know we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna sell them in conferences they're gonna sell out all right there we go so finally imported so by the way so let's just backtrack for a second um you want to turn off the account numbers and you want to fix the chart of accounts, so I mean the, the accounts, so they don't contain the numbers, that's going to be the easiest way to go about it. Um, I just happen to have not fully saved or wait for it to refresh and recognize account numbers disappearing. So I click on complete import. Um, it does this thing. You can click on the, on the link, and then it sends you, uh, for some reason, it sends you to some sort of report Okay, that's useless. So we're just gonna click on the recent transactions button <laughs> and go into in going to journal. I, I bet in the international versions it actually would take you somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it 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 should work. That shirt's gonna catch on. It's gonna be it. It's gonna it should work this time, right? Okay, so here's the journal entry. See how, how about it came now? in. It, it's actually it's actually wonderful. It's a great, beautiful thing. Uh might be worth live troubleshooting this. Did I put classes across all lines? I did not. Okay, so so it was just my, my journal entry didn't contain classes across all lines. <laughs> it actually did exactly what we wanted to do. There it is new journal entry import. It actually works really well, in my opinion. I think um, I think it's ninety five percent there. I think some clarity around the templates and around the account numbers would be helpful. One thing I do want to add, and, and, and this might be to my detriment because there will be some element of winging it in the process here. I'm going to save uh, and open the accounts, the account numbers one more time. I'm going to click on chart of accounts. Let me hit refresh, make sure the chart of accounts comes in, hit refresh one more time. And again, I might have to log out, log back in. Let's do a hard refresh. Okay, no, okay, so um, so note to self, if you ever turn off and turn on a chart uh, account numbers, log out of QuickBooks, log back in, because for some reason, um, it doesn't work uh, quite immediately. Okay, right. Okay, so let's log back in. I'm gonna try one more thing, and this is mostly for the sake of um, just kind of like live troubleshooting how you can manage this uh, chart of accounts, see, chart of account numbers, situation i'm going to show you one thing that kind of worked for us so i'm going to uh, show you live on the screen on that so, okay so we're going to try we're going to try two options here so option number one and let me uh open up the other journal entry that i had here we go okay let's x out the one that didn't have the numbers let's zoom in and see the whole thing so option number one, I am going to try only uh, removing the accounts 
from the ones the account numbers from the one that have sub accounts but it's going to be even weirder i'm going to replace the number at the very beginning with the one that was sub account uh dan can you follow that because if if you can't that means i didn't explain <laughs> yes. it correctly okay yes right. you're going to take so, 54 520 and put it at, in the front of job expense exactly and by the way when, okay. when um i was tracking when, <laughs> when somebody at into it um was thinking about this saying this is a great solution for users by the way this is awesome I, i'm sure a lot of uh, users are going to love going back and copying and pasting the account number from the front to the back i mean like can you imagine what they were smoking when that happened uh you know, when, when they actually uh, they all shake their hands together and said this is a good idea all right so uh, anyway so I'll, I'll import this one to 410 and then i'm going to save so this is the first attempt that we're going to try we're going to use the the lowest level account number all the way in the top and then erase after the one account number the uh, accounts afterwards and um and uh um uh mark pre prevent me from a catastrophe if i forgot something in the process or was was my logic uh right from 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 the pro from the beginning i'm not gonna lie to you i was answering a question and the okay, question no problem. Answer, all right, no problem all right, so there it is. There's a, there's a so there's a demonstration of how that works. So QuickBooks will allow me to use account numbers if again only the lowest level account number is used at the very beginning. And then we'll try one, one more thing, which actually I have not tested. Do, so you, do you still will... need to use the hierarchy of the of the, of the parent sub, or could you that, just that's, use? That's what I'm about. That's about to show. So instead of having any accounts, I'm just going to show. Uh, I'm just going to do account number. That makes sense. So only account yep. number. We'll see if that one goes through. That one, I to be honest with you, I have not tested this one, but um, my, my spider senses tell me that this should work. <laughs> but let's let's give that a shot. <laughs> let's save that, and let's go back into journal entry, browse, and let's try just journal and just account numbers, and go to next. Okay. So there's the conclusion, folks. You have to <laughs> either turn off your account numbers completely and remove account numbers from the hierarchy of your template or turn on account numbers and use that weird workaround where you have to use uh, the actual um, last, uh, last, uh, last account or lowest hierarchy account um, as, as the account number and then erase it from the, from the rest of the, of the path. Okay. So any, uh, any thoughts or conclusions or a uh, sense of amazement on how well designed this tool is? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I mean, Open honestly, if I, every time I look at QuickBooks, I honest to God think, man, I wish I could live up to this. It and actually, you know, what's funny is I, I do very much actually um, have very much respect for the people who develop uh, QuickBooks. Now, admittedly, I like their old system a little bit better for QuickBooks Online rather than their new system for things, but that's just a me thing personally. <laughs> uh. Yeah, the, I think the good thing is um, there's actually more and more uh, Intuit employees watching webinars, Facebook groups, these type of things. So this is like an amazing passive aggressive way to give feedback where we just like show people how frustrating it is in public and they go yeah you know what we should we should fix this so i guarantee you somebody will watch this and they'll 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 come up with a solution for this so in about two to three decades you will see an update and <laughs> you'll see this issue fixed all right so let's move on to uh let's move on that to, was passive uh, aggressive too right so yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on to uh, the solutions that we have built with Right Tool. There's actually uh, two sets worth discussing. One is the free features in Right Tool that are related to journal entries. We're going to be focused on journal entries 100%. And then there's going to be uh, three features, three pro features related to journal entries. So we're going to turn on journal entry print, export journal entry to CSV, journal entry balance visual and show journal entry normal balances. Now, um, I believe one of these two was um, was uh, Mark's baby, like it, this was de developed maybe two or three years ago. Was that the journal entry balance visual or the normal the normal balances, correct? 
Uh, the normal balances as well as the journal entry print, but mostly the normal balances. The Correct. print was nice. just more of like some some people asked for it, and I was like, you know what, I'll do it. And that was before we started working on Right Tool. Exactly. So, uh, so let, let's talk about those. So, two two actually were brought in from um, Mark's already pre developed idea, and then two were added in the process of of Right Tool existing. Let's call it that. Okay. So once Right Tool is turned on. Uh, and again, these are these are available in the free version. You don't have to pay anything. You're gonna click on that little um, toolbox icon. I don't even know what to call that. Uh, wrench and uh, what's the best way to call that? A wrench uh, and screwdriver wrench. tools. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The wrench, the wrench and screwdriver icon. Uh, so my screen got zoomed in, and I forgot how to zoom it out. We're cyber workers, not physical workers. Yeah. Hold on a second. Okay, talk amongst yourself. My Mac <laughs> went crazy. <laughs> Give me a second. You know, I was, I was just posting on here. I love that it didn't work right the first time because when you're importing, I don't think it ever does or it very rarely does. So I loved how, you know, you see the troubleshooting. Well, let me try this. Well, let me try that. Let's try this. You know, because a lot of times when you're importing data, it does not work right the first time. And you do have to troubleshoot until you get it correct. You know, and so that is the process with importing data a lot of times. And so, you know, I think that was a good learning process to try different things and, you know, don't just give up. And somebody says, oh, you know, why are you going through all this for one journal entry? Usually if you're importing journal entries, you're not just importing one journal entry. Like Hector said, you're importing payroll. You're going to be importing payroll journal entries all year long. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yes, you may have to troubleshoot the first time but once you get the format figured out and you get it you know troubleshoot and figured out then the rest of the year you're going to be good to go you know so yeah you wouldn't do this for one je um but it's a process the first time that pays off the rest of the year that you know and that's and, and that's typically what can, is what going to happen is a great point michelle is typically is what's, what's going to happen when you in, introduce some kind of new technology inside of quickbooks is that you're going to shift your workload to the front end of setting it up right and yeah. once you have that then it's it's like a it's like an oil geyser right it's whoop, okay <laughs> payday after that so once you have that you know things mapped right or formatted right or you know something like that then the the, the payoff is going to be the countless times after that that you won't have to do all that um, or that workload that you were typically doing by doing it manually, by putting, by typing in the, the journal entry from scratch. And that's okay. where that Facebook group and the community and Mark and Hector are great resources to help. Hey, I can't get this to import. Can somebody help me? What am I doing wrong? You're not alone. That's one of the great things about having a community of your peers to help you as well. Okay, I think, right. uh, I think I'm back. You can see my screen uh, and it's working uh, correctly. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, give me one second. Okay. All right. So now we're gonna click on the um, wrench and, and 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 screwdriver, and then I'm, on the search settings, I'm just gonna type uh, a journal entry. Okay. And then basically, it's going to give me all the things that contain the word journal entry, either in the description or in the name of the in the name of the tool itself. So we're going to turn on uh, extended print options, export journal entry to CSV, journal entry balance, and I think it was um, the normal balances, right? And that was like, actually not showing there. What is that? I have to change the text. I'll change that right now. Okay. No, but I, I get out. So change the text. So it's, it actually says journal entry, not JE. Okay. So that's the search actually searches within the name of, of those. So now I'm going to go back and open up a, a journal entry. And you're going to see once you turn uh, these features on, uh, you're going to see uh, new buttons pop up in the journal entry. Let me just refresh here for a second. And those uh, buttons indicate uh, the new, uh, the new uh, features that have been enabled. So one is I'm going to go ahead and select a couple of accounts. So I'm just going through and writing a normal journal entry the way I would do that. And then sometimes like we'll, we'll look at a journal entry and we'll forget for a second, is this a, an asset? Is this a liability? Is this an expense? 
And you have to go in and you have to look at that. And on top of that, you have to remember, you know, which is the debit and which is the credit. So this little button up there that has the, um, the top and the down arrow, click on that. It gives you basically a little phantom cheat sheet where it basically reminds you, you know, what type of account this is. If this is normally a debit account or a credit account, I know we're all accountants that so we're supposed to memorize this, but sometimes, you know, it just, it's just, it's a really nice uh, thing to have in there. So as you write the journal entry and you're, and you're putting here, yeah, I'm trying to increase my accounts payable. And yes, I'm trying to reduce my checking account and have to reduce my, you know, student subscriptions and I'm trying to increase my interest expense. So just having the arrows there uh, showing you what things are supposed to be, it's just a good indication of how you're going to function moving forward. Okay. So now once you finish the journal entry and, uh, or you try to save the journal entry, usually you get an error saying the debits and the credits don't balance. So the second feature that we added adds a little equal sign down here and it tells you how much you're off by. Okay, so it's just basically just a, it's a quick reminder. Hey, you're off by this. This is why it's not working. Um, and essentially, then you'll know to take that number and uh, put it here uh, to uh, to remind you to uh, to basically wrap up your journal entry. So once you save your journal entry, and let's just make sure we put uh, I'll put a different account that's not receivable or 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 payable, and then I saved my journal entry. And there's a couple things happening. Okay, so I got I saved my journal entry. Now let's say I want to print this. Okay? QuickBooks Online doesn't let you print journal entries. So we're going to click on Write Tool Print. And then this is going to give me um, a, new, a new screen that we created, um, uh, it, that Write Tool created, that essentially gives you a quick preview of what this will look like. And then you can save this journal entry as a PDF somewhere in your computer. So we basically uh, developed our own version of, of journal entries. Let me bring it here so you can see what it looks like in PDF format, you can print that. Again, this only works with um, with uh, uh, with uh, Write Tool enabled. And again, the free version. So you get to print your own journal entries. There's a setting that allows you to print it in landscape format if you also have customer names, locations, and it's just not enough space to have it in um, in uh, in regular format, in, in, in portrait, um, portrait format, yes. Okay, um, and the last thing here that we haven't covered, okay, yes, export to CSV. So if I click on the export to CSV button all the way in the top, uh, it creates a CSV file for me. Let, me. let me bring this around here and I'm gonna zoom this in 200% so you can see it. And good news, okay, this export, like the right tool export to CSV, exports the account numbers in the actual format that would work via an import. So the built-in reports in QuickBooks don't do that, but this CSV file does that. Why is that? Who in the world knows? We basically just copy and pasted the information as is displayed on the screen. Now, to be fair, um, you know, I could argue either way why I want to see those account numbers uh, or not. It's a different, it's a different issue altogether. But for, for because it's not really consistent for imp, import, at least our CSV export, it if, as the way the tool is built now, the built-in import tool, it allows you to import that. Okay, and then again, right here in the bottom, it says right tool print. It's to the left of the reverse button. That that one's not red. Usually our buttons are red, but this is an, an example of of a non-red right tool button. One of the few <laughs> that we don't put it, in. They red. don't let you touch the the footer. Yeah, well, the footer. <laughs> It's just the contrast will be very difficult. Like it would be yeah, very difficult yeah. to put red, red and black. So the only solution would be to put an uh, like a print icon up there. But we've had so many issues with having just so many icons up there, and you know the feedback buttons and stuff getting in the way. So uh, this is working for now. The the right tool print. So we're not gonna we're not gonna mess with it. Okay. And one more thing, by the way, on that last one that you had uh, on that last journal entry, um, one of the things about the journal balance that is. Kind of at least one of my favorite things about it and it's a small thing but what you'll notice is if you change um like the opening balance equity if you change it to yeah that um it's fine and then go into like the interest expense uh, interest uh expense. Yep. yeah and then like backspace all of it it will actually so yeah just delete it you'll actually have a placeholder in there that will tell you what that particular amount needs to be in order to balance it out 
Um, so it just makes it so that um, it's because at the bottom it says 200,000, but if you're editing something after the fact, this gives you a little bit more insight without having to do calculations on what you actually need to put in. Okay. So, so just, just a little phantom to, a phantom so total. A, <laughs> so a quick a quick recap: if I want to adjust if I want to adjust any of these numbers, and I delete it, okay, or it should not delete backspace. <laughs> Well, it it should backspace now. Apparently, it didn't want to do it this particular time for some reason. Oh, okay, I get because why. Because debit, it's because yeah. debit needs. Okay, needs right. So if I and the, and the other cool thing is that if I delete uh, a journal entry with this feature enable, I delete a journal entry line. Uh, the the fan the little phantom grayed out amount that shows in there that one fifty five is actually what you will need to balance that journal entry out. So it's not only yeah. in the bottom. With equals is also on the live preview of any of the fields. It doesn't have to be like the last blank field or anything like that, which is which is awesome. So thank you very much, Mark, for for bringing that uh, that feature in in there. Okay, we don't have that much time, so we're gonna cover as much as possible from the pro features. Okay, so the pro features that we're gonna showcase in this case is going to be the copy Excel to transactions the clear zero lines uh, button. And there is one more that, um, yeah, in Experiments Pro, reallocate in PNL. Okay, so we're gonna click and save that. Then we're gonna go back into QuickBooks Online and showcase those additional right tool pro features for journal entry. So the first one, that's probably the most obvious one to uh, to showcase is getting rid of zero, zero lines. So like in this case, you see there's two, lines with zeros and of course if you have one or two it's quicker to just click on the little trash icon but if you have a very jo long journal entry maybe you import it maybe you duplicated it maybe you reversed it whatever it is if it has a zero you just click on that button there that says clear zero value lines and it somehow deletes the two for you uh the it just leaves them blank but once you click on save it should delete the lines out so it leaves them yeah. blank you click on save and it just get gets rid of gets rid of those lines. Okay. Many people had asked us to like the ability to resort in journal entries. We don't have that yet. We're still trying to figure out if we if we even can do that. But that, that has been one of the most uh requested features is to be able to resort in a journal entry. So we're working, we're working on that to see if that's something we can ever um we can never do. Yeah. Okay, and and one point, final thing on the clear zero yeah. value lines, it yeah. also keeps whatever is the top line because uh, this is actually a Megan Tarnow uh request so it does keep the top line if it's a zero so just be aware of that if you're using that okay and and and, and there's a long philosophical conversation we can have about that and why that that is has to do but with <laughs> uh, source and headers and details but she said bottom line if the top one's a zero don't mess with it because right? I, I might need it i might need it just as an indicator or as a note or something like that it could Absolutely. be a use case for that to be there yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we should probably do a whole power hour just on like how how journal entries behave in reports, um, because mm -hmm. if we if you if you if you go down the rabbit hole, you will understand why that top line sometimes needs to be set up in a certain way. OK. All right. So the last thing we're going to talk about is uh, the sort of copy and paste feature. So imagine I'm going to export this journal entry really quick and, and the export was actually built so we can test the import. Like, I mean, other people have found the export to be useful for all other situations, but essentially the reason why the export exists is so we can have a template for, like our own template for the import. So just imagine that you have uh, your own journal entry. And again, if once QuickBooks gets their built-in QBO journal entry feature in check and the stuff is working the way it's supposed to work, we're our feature will probably not have any more any more need per se. But the nice thing about our feature is that instead of you having to save the CSV file and map it, you can just do sort of a copy and paste type action. And sometimes that's easier and uh, or, or neater uh, for some people. So I'm just gonna make some modifications to this uh, journal entry here. Okay, and um, and just assume for a second that we have a journal entry in Excel already. And and we used uh, we used all the awesome features that Excel has, like copying and pasting, and find and replace, and click and drag down. And we have uh, information here, let's say about classes. So I'll bring this over here, and let's say again, we have we already have predetermined uh, journal entry with all this information. So I'm gonna go here to save a new, 
So I'm going to start with a, with a blank journal entry. And essentially what I want is I just want to copy and paste this uh, into the journal entry. So I'll select everything in here, click on copy. Okay, it's just a regular, as if it was a regular copy and paste. Come back into QuickBooks Online. And no, I can't just paste in here. That won't work. Okay, unfortunately, that's not how... The, <laughs> we did the, try the that at one point. We did try that. <laughs> we did try that. So we have this little button up there. This one doesn't have a label. It just has uh, the standard uh, copy icon. And you can also do Control Shift J um, to access it. So you can either do Control Shift J or uh, or click on that button. And then the journal entry uh, pop up, uh, the paste journal entry pop up will now uh, allow you to paste in here. So now I can fully paste in here. So if I right click and click on paste, uh, now it gives me a preview of what's going on, okay? If something doesn't match, uh, like for example, um, if I have something that doesn't match, but it it's approximate to something else, uh, this will be in yellow. Uh, and if you if you can't see color, you're gonna see that that sort of uh, uh, gray exclamation or that light colored exclamation mark uh, right next to it, and I'll let you know that you could check the possibilities. Uh, of these accounts, and it's because you know CH is containing these other accounts, and you can select the one that is supposed to be. And if and if nothing makes sense, like if this doesn't match anything on your chart of accounts, it would be red with an X on it, letting you know, hey, if you try to import that, it will be essentially it will just be blank. Okay, so it'll just be blank. So I'll just give an example to show you that I click paste in QuickBooks, and it basically makes it feel like you did a copy and paste. It's not really a copy and paste, but for the user. And it's really, it's kind of like a copy and paste. Then you can save, um, you know, put, put the right account if you had an account that didn't match and then uh, click on save. And then that would finish the journal entry. So we have one more thing to cover, but we're actually on top of the hour. So um, unless we want to turn this into QB power hour point 25, <laughs> Plus. Uh, we, we will leave uh, reallocate for another time. Or if you guys want to maybe wrap it up for the people that have to leave and do some extra bonus, we can do that as well. Yeah, just keep going. Uh, if we, we last couple times we've uh, we've run over, so you know if people got to drop off. That's totally fine. We will have this, of course, available uh, for replay. So if you do need to to come back later and uh, skip ahead now, to the to the top of the yeah, hour, exactly. Yeah, YouTube, right? It's in YouTube. It's in the Power mm -hmm. Hour, uh, QBPowerHour.com website. So if you got to go, you got to go. We get it. But for the people that stay. This is going to blow your mind. If you haven't seen it yet, this is going to blow your mind. Like this is like truly, truly uh, revolutionary from the perspective of saving time. Like the, the few people that use this, and it's very, it's sometimes a small use case, few people that use this save hours and hours and hours per month. And they have told us that. Thing is that it's maybe a small group of people that need this feature. So it's called Reallocate for, uh, in p &L. It's currently under Experiments Pro. This is where we put all the features that are beta per se this is kind of our beta uh, list of features and this one what allows me to do is it allows me to create a journal entry that reallocates amounts sitting in a class location or customer project that has not been identified or one that has been identified as admin or overhead or quote to reclass in the future. And instead of you having to go into each of the transactions and divide the transaction by three, because you have three classes or three locations or divided by any particular percentage that it's the way your business is composed, you can simply uh, run this tool that reallocate from PNL and basically creates the journal entry for you to automatically reallocate everything um, that's sitting there. So let's do an example. So I'm going to run a regular PNL on classic reports, and then I'm going to do a PNL by class and click on run report. Okay, classic situation with classics. I have an overhead class in this case, which is an actual class where people were putting things under, but it's neither. It's it's not new construction and it's not um, remodel. And there's also things sitting on not specified. Now I'm going to do something really quick. Uh, this actually makes it much easier to display. I'm going to edit these classes. Uh, so new construction is one and uh, remodel is two. Okay, this just makes um, the, the demonstration a lot easier to display. 
So we'll go back and run a PNL by class. So now they're in order, right? So class one, class two, we have an overhead and then we have the not specified, okay? And this, there's no limit on how many classes this can work on. Well, actually the limit is probably gonna be a thousand lines in the journal entry. So, you know, the, whatever the math is of all the accounts, all the classes, but for now we've tried, we've had people try it with six, seven, eight classes and it's worked just, just fine. So I'm gonna start with overhead. I'm, I'm gonna reclassify everything that's sitting in my overhead account and I'm gonna spread this across multiple multiple classes. So I'm gonna click on this reallocate button that's to the left of the email button for the reports. Again, this is a PNL by class in classic in uh, classic reports. I'm gonna click on reallocate. This pop-up comes up and the first thing that is asking me is, where do you wanna get the values from? Do you wanna get it from no class or non-specified class or a specific class like this one called overhead, okay? Um, give me one second. This was not showing the number. Uh, I, I wonder if this is going to be an issue. I just changed the name of these classes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick refresh. That is interesting. Yeah, just because uh, I just noticed that I removed that number. So I wonder if that's going to cause any issues. Um, okay. Maybe. We'll see. So reallocate. Let's get back to it. Um, let's Okay, now, now the number is showing. So let's go from overhead. And this is showing me a preview of all the dollar amounts that are sitting in my overhead class for this period in accrual basis in this case. And right now this only works in PL. We haven't even like thought about how this will work with balance sheet, but we're we're thinking about that too. And also you can choose the type of accounts that you want to see. So let's say I only really want to see uh, expense accounts or I only want to see other income accounts or I only want to see uh, whatever it is, right? So that we'll pick only expenses, the only things that we're going to move. Uh, we can remove account numbers if you want to. Um, again, this has to do with importing journal entries, all that stuff. So I'm going to keep the journal. I'm going to keep the, actually, I'm going to remove the journal entries. I mean, the, the account numbers for now. Then I'm going to go to select all in the top so I can select which accounts I want to reallocate. Click on next. And then it's asking me, how do you want to reallocate these? Okay, so we can do a couple of things. We can leave all the ones that are showing. So like overhead is already showing there, but just as an example, if I click on split evenly, uh, it'll just split by the number of uh, classes that I have. So that's 33, 33, 33, a third each. If I remove one of them and click on split evenly, uh, I split evenly, it will do 50, 50. And depending on the period, if I have a particular uh, number of expenses or, uh, or cost of goods sold, I mean, depending on the period, and then I can use any of these uh, totals as the indicator to help me figure out what percentages I want to use. So I can click on split proportionally again, and so it will use your total sales, your total expenses, your net income, whatever indicator you wanna to use to have a more proportional uh, way of allocating. And of course, all this stuff is very discre discretional. I mean, as the accounting professional, as a CFO, whatever, sometimes you have a policy where you spread everything evenly, and sometimes you'll have a policy where you do some sort of proportional um, spread. Some of our nonprofit clients are telling us that they do spread based on hours per employees, per class. That's something you're gonna have to calculate externally and figure out what those percentages uh, look like. If you have a lot of classes, one of the things that's very nice that we recently added is there's a little button here that says export percentage to CSV. So whatever this percentage is, you can export. And again, it makes more sense when there's a whole bunch of um, a whole, whole bunch of classes. So I'm going to, or a bunch of locations, whatever you're allocating. So let me bring this in to make this a lot bigger. So basically it's a simple template where it says percentage and class. So if you wanna build your own percentage and class table, just export the current one that it has and do your own thing here. Okay, just, just put the percentages there. And then uh, with, uh, with that reallocation, you can click on choose file and import that in. And this was, uh, some people are telling us that they have their own reallocation tables and um, and they don't wanna go in there and type it by hand every time, it's a custom one. So we can use the import export feature uh, to do that. So once you're done, you're gonna have two choices. One, you can export to CSV and it basically just creates um, a CSV file for us. Let me just zoom this in so you can see this better. So this is option number one, just export uh, the journal entry. Maybe the journal entry, you want to play with it in Excel or something like that to bring it back in, or maybe you just want to preview it. 
before you import it. Really, you know, the use case is really up to you. I noticed that the classes are being shifted for you. And also we added notes. The notes are very clear. Reallocated 35% to this class, 65% to this class. And then on the other note it says reallocated from overhead or reallocated from non-specified. So we, we pre-added the notes for you so you don't have to really uh, mess too much with the notes. Um, and then we have all the reallocation here. Remember, this journal entry is not gonna affect your PL. Your PL is gonna be the exact same net income. What it's going to affect is your profitability per class, profitability per customer project, profitability per location. We're not changing our PL um, without these columns. We're changing the individual values within the columns, which is why it's a journal entry within itself. It is it's a journal entry within the same account. So once you have that journal entry, then you can use the built-in QuickBooks feature to import if you want to. Um, or of course, we're gonna encourage you to use uh, the one that we have with Write Tool um, because if you choose copy to clipboard instead of export to CSV, and that really should say copy to clipboard, clipboard and open new journal entry, but it usually don't have the space for it. So we click on copy to clipboard. <laughs> only have so happens. much real estate in the button. Correct. So. It, it copies it to your clipboard and then gives you a pop-up saying, do you want to open a new journal entry, which is typically what we're going to do. Then we click OK. It opens a new tab with the journal entry for you. Remember that journal entry is now saved in your clipboard. OK, so all you have to do is click on the on that paste from Excel function I showcased earlier. And now oh, then you come in here and you right click and paste. And now we're pasting this humongous uh, journal entry. And then we click on uh, paste into QuickBooks and there's the creation of the journal entry. So the, <laughs> Look at the, Michelle, she's clapping. Yeah. So the first <laughs> phase, the first, first part of the app is creating the, other, the, the template for you. And the second part of the workflow is to actually save the journal entry for you. So you have, you, it's, it, it has to be done in two steps. We cannot do this all in one step. Uh, just we, we will need the API for that or somehow create a bunch of delays and a bunch of macros. For now, I think if you're if you're in the position to do this type of work, you're probably gonna be uh, um, uh, slick enough to be able to press all these buttons. But in either case, look, this is a super long journal entry, very precise, okay? And then we'll just click on save. Uh, you can reverse the journal entry, you can delete the journal entry, whatever you want. I mean, there's no way for us to undo the way Transaction Pro or SASANT allow you to undo an entry because again we're we're not connecting this via the API. Then I go back into my PNL. I'm gonna click on Run Report, and essentially all of my overhead is now gone. All the overhead, bye bye overhead, is now gone, <laughs> and it's now put in inside each of the each of the each of the um, uh, classes the way it's supposed to be. And again, it works with locations. It works with customer projects as well. So if you got customer projects you can do that michelle's face i'm just looking at michelle's reaction they like her jaw is literally on the floor oh my Which god hector <laughs> and mark i just i love this i love it i love it i love it and i think of how much time this could have saved me for so many years and stuff oh my gosh this is amazing this feature right here alone is just worth it i mean it's incredible you could sell just this one piece of this tool for Buku Bucks. I mean, just that one feature right there. I absolutely love this. This is amazing. This Thank is you, Michelle. incredible. I mean, Thank not you, only for not, everybody's talking about nonprofits there, but not just nonprofits, but also for those construction clients that are allocating overhead to the job. When you want to allocate owner's time to the jobs, when you want to allocate those nonprofits, the overhead to the job, anything that you're wanting to allocate. Oh my gosh, this is so incredible and how much time it's going to save. Oh, I love this. Yeah, oh, and, worth, love and worth, this. yeah, thank you. And worth pointing out, okay, so we we did this with uh, a specific class, the overhead class. We can also do this with the ones that don't have any class, okay, not specified. Now, one thing I do want to point out, we are not going into every single transaction and splitting the transaction up for you. The transactions are being left intact. We're, we're doing a full fix of this. We're basically, we're right. just doing a journal entry. We're cleaning it up for, for reports only, only for reports, okay? And one thing to remember, and this is a kind of something that we're probably, again, we probably need to save 
a whole episode just to talk about how journal entries work. But uh, once you turn on the ability to do adjusting entries, which you don't see here because I'm not logged in as an accountant, then you can create uh, you can create an adjusting entry, and then you can pick you know whether you want to see the PNL with the journal with the adjusting or without the adjusting. Something that we don't have a chance to uh, get into. But I do want to show you one more thing, and this is kind of a bonus, since we still have um, over 140 bonus, people still bonus power hour plus time. Yeah. So, so, so this this is this is a feature that's been pretty quiet just because you have to be like a super uber nerd uh, to play with this feature, which is called the scripts. Okay. Now, um, ever since uh, ChatGPT uh, started started existing, basically, and I started obsessing with it, I started playing with ChatGPT and try to figure out if I can get ChatGPT to teach me how to code. So, long story short, I didn't learn how to code, uh, but ChatGPT can write the code for me. So, like one of the one of the one of the things that people were asking, for example, is Hector, could you add a button that that will save this transaction, reverse it, and then save it for me? I mean, literally, somebody wants to save like this click, like save, and then reverse, and then save. Okay, that was only two or three clicks. Okay, it's really not a big deal. I normally would have dismissed that and go. Hey, person, don't be so lazy. Okay, that's that was like <laughs> one tiny little click. But uh, uh, supposedly our ethos is, you know, we'll save you clicks, we'll save you seconds, and that it that almost was a second. So like it qualifies. <laughs> so I'm not gonna bother. I'm not gonna bother Mark with. Hey, go develop this 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 button, this save and immediately reverse. So what I did is I went to ChatGPT. And it's kind of complicated. So I, I took the HTML code, pasted it in chat GPT and say, hey, I'm trying to like automate this process. I want to click save. I want to click reverse. I want to click on save again. I want to change the date. I want to do all these things. Um, and then uh, and then chat GPT came back and said, yeah, the code would look like this. And then what I do was called, I, I, I created what's called a bookmarklet format, which is essentially what we allow to do in the script section. So if you actually have, um, if you actually have the code, which in the slides here where it says bonus, the code is here for you. You literally would have to just copy and paste that code from the slides, copy and paste that into the script section. So we come in here onto scripts, we click on add script, we paste the code. And again, you don't have to know you don't have to know any code for now. But then once you start nerding out, getting into ChatGPT and having build codes for you, you can build your own scripts inside Right Tool, and then you can start experimenting things and come back to us and get Hector, look what I built. And then we'll <laughs> once we have time, we'll go out. I'll go bother Mark and and Joel and and Patrick, our development team, and say, hey, it looks like this is catching on. Let's build this into a, a hard code this into a Right Tool tool. So we'll we'll call this um, Save and Reverse. A journal entry, something like that. We save it, and then while you're in a journal entry, just watch. Single click. I click on the on 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 my script. It will save. It will reverse, and it will save again. And all this stuff happened without me clicking anything. So again, probably not like the most powerful time saving feature, but it's just a good illustration on what we we built that in. And and the reason why script was built, it was for me. I told Mark, Mark, I want to play with. Uh, chat GPT and, and a lot of the features that we have added um, has been because I play with it, I add the feature, then I send the code over to Mark and then Mark figures out whether the code can be worked verbatim or does it need to be reworked, but at least I work out all the logic and all the kinks in the process. So that's the little bonus uh, thing I wanted to show uh, you. Just Hector's because... playground is what it is. Really. Correct, that's <laughs> the playground. So I don't know if you wanna run the last polling question and I'll, leave, I'll let Mark, um, point out anything that I may, I may have missed i mean i think most of the time if you miss something i would point it out in the moment so i think you're good <laughs> and mark yeah, I'm, very upset let... that, I'm very upset mark that you interrupted me and you didn't let me speak at all I, <laughs> yeah. honest to god oh, mark, i, I was mark's worried here. <laughs> Hector, do you even breathe <laughs> i don't breathe i don't breathe <laughs> You so are Kenny amazing. G. He can uh, he can breathe in and exhale at the same time. <laughs> You're amazing as always, Hector. I mean, this stuff is really great. You and Mark have done an amazing job with this, and it just I haven't seen it for a while. Um, some of these latest updates you guys have done, and I'll tell you, I am very impressed. As, as a lot of people are saying on here, the latest 
stuff that you guys have been doing is just incredible. I haven't haven't seen these latest things, and I'm more impressed than ever. And you guys have been nice enough to uh, to offer uh, a discount for for Pro uh, for the QB Power Hour uh, community. So uh, if you use QBPH when you when you activate uh, the Pro, uh, you will get a discount for that first year uh, of using these features. Well, so clearly, if you're not saving the time with what you just did, <laughs> just demonstrated with the reallocation. Uh, a little extra savings that first year to, to to get used to these things, and then boom, next year you're you're all off and off to the races. Lauren said, "Worth every penny." Nice. <laughs> yeah, uh, just pricing in general, very very odd situation because, like uh, we said, we don't connect per company; we connect per user. So it's like it's it's a tough balance because there are some people who get like well in excess of the subscription cost of value back. And then there's other people who are just getting started and they're still in their infancy, infancy in their business. And it's like, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more tough to justify. So it's a hard thing to always get, uh, to get it just right. All right. And uh, Hector and Mark, we appreciate you joining us and, uh, and, and donating your time here today. Um, I know you guys are super busy and, uh, and we really appreciate everything that you do for the accounting community as well, because this allows some people to make, what, what, what was it again? Is make QuickBooks pleasurable again? Pleasant, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pleasant, yeah. there we go. Yes, All right. thank you everybody. And Dan, as always, thank you very much. All right, we'll see you next time on the QB Power Hour. Have a great day, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.